Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at this Founders Edition RTX 3070. The customer sent it in saying that he's left it idling on his desktop. He went away for 30 minutes and when he came back the computer was off and it wouldn't just power on again. It, it, it was just dead. So we're going to go over a few measurements now and see if we can see what's wrong with it. Okay, so with our multimeter now in diode mode, we're going to check the first data pair. Oop, let's, uh, let's see if I can show you. Which is good. Second. Which is good. And then checking the ref clock, clock plus and minus. Which is good. And good so this hasn't been killed by a riser and we'll move on now um, multimeter and just beep mode okay checking the 12 volts from the slot nothing check in 3.3 volts which is nothing um checking the external 12 volt connection nothing nothing And we have a short circuit. So we have a short circuit on the 12 volt external connector. Uh, this is very likely to be a V-core MOSFET. We'll strip it down now and we'll take a look what we can see. All right, here's our card stripped down. Uh, this is what the board looks like. We're gonna switch over to the microscope now and we'll take a look at all the power stages as well as take a few more measurements. Uh, Again, we don't want to work on a card that's already dead. So we're going to check things like 5 volts, 1.8 volts, etc. And we'll do that right now. All right, so here's the external connector on the card. This is where the 12 volts showing that it's in short. So with the multimeter in beep mode. So if I touch ground right now, it beeps. And this is where we're seeing our short on this 12 volt rail. And we have a short here. So we're going to now check the other rails to see the resistances and make sure they haven't been killed. Okay, so checking in order, let's start with the 5 volt rail. That looks perfectly good to me. Checking 1.8 volts. One kilo ohm. Yep, that looks all right to me. And PEX. 13 ohms, which again looks good to me. Okay. Last but not least, let's check the memory. Thirty-five ohms. Once again, that looks good to me. Okay, so we're going to move over now and see if we have any physical damage on the v core power stages. Um, we have a mess. All right, let's tidy that up a bit and then we'll check again. Right, so we have a bit of view now. Everything's looking okay so far. Okay, 
we know one of these are in short. So we're going to now inject a voltage and put it under the thermal camera. See if we can see anything getting hot. So it's not the most appealing view. Um, I'm actually trying to cover up some of the reflections so that you don't see them. Or we can just ignore them. I tell you what. This over here. And this over here. These are not hot spots. Those are just reflections from the inductors. Um, for anyone that works with a thermal camera, it's it's very awkward to use. So at the moment we got one volt, and we're going to see if anything else warms up on the board. Okay, so we're injecting now. We have a one point eight three amp pull. And we have nothing. Okay, so we're going to put a little bit more voltage on. I'm going to turn this up to 1.5 volts. I don't want to chance any more than this because this is directly coupled to the core. So we're trying a bit more voltage now. And we can see that core is warming up. So we know the voltage is going to the core, but we cannot see any power stages getting hot. We can only see a few reflections on the board. And nothing is getting warm. All right, so we're removing the voltage now. So we're going to work this a little differently. And right now what we're going to do is determine what this 12 volt fade is actually feeding, um, which phases it's actually feeding. So what we're going to do is actually place one probe over here. And then we're going to go through the phases and see which 12 volts are actually shorted here. Okay, so starting with the top face, let me just make that clear. So probe on 12 volts and check in the first one. So we have a connection there. Second one, we have a connection there. Okay, number three. We have a connection there and we have no connection there, right? So the top three inductors so far. It's number five, nothing. So we have one there. I'm probing the last two. Nothing. And nothing. Okay, and there's one more phase up here. Twelve volts. And we have a connection there. Okay. So we have this inductor, these three inductors, and the third from the bottom. This one. So these are all connected to this phase. So what we are actually going to do now is turn the card over. We're going to solder a wire to ground those phases. And hopefully this will increase the current draw and something will get warm with the thermal. Uh, right, so we already touched this, but uh, we figured we should let you have a view. So what we're doing now is we're just placing a bit of solder here on one of the outputs. So this is for the 12 volt phase that's in short. Uh, these are the inductors connected directly to it. And we're just gonna attach a wire. Like that. It doesn't have to be an amazing connection. Uh, what we're looking to do is simply ground that phase and force those phases to pull more current. Okay. So we're uh, switching back to the other other view right now. All right, so here we are. This is what we've done. We have the wire soldered on here, and we've clamped it to ground. This is the lead from our voltage injection tool, which is just a bench power supply. So that's now grounded. We have it set on two volts. And we're going to put voltage back down this rail, see if anything gets warm. Okay, and injecting now. So 
So the power supply is now pulling 5 amps. And we can see something getting warm. It's rather subtle, but it's enough. So according to our thermal camera now, this phase on top is the one which is a problem. So we're going to remove these two capacitors just to be safe. We don't want to blow them up. And we'll move this power stage and see if our short's cleared. See if we're all right. Okay, so everything's nice and warm now. We've got this on the preheater. Gonna put a bit of flux and we're going to remove this component. Okay, that was a little awkward to get off. I might uh, turn the board to do the replacement. All right. So we're going to work from... Wow, well, there's just uh, no real easy way to do this. If we do it this way. So I can work from the clear end. Right, all those pads are looking okay, so the main question now is, did we get the short? So let's find out. The short is gone. So, so that was definitely our faulty component. We'll uh, look at replacing it right now. And this repair should be done. Okay, so here's our replacement component. We've just put a small amount of solder on the pins. And we're going to install this right now. And hopefully everything is good you have to put some some shielding back around the capacitor so we don't damage it while leaving ourselves some space to work it wasn't the priority of the guys who designed the board when they put these things together that anyone would ever fix them so everything is put in an awkward position. Right, so I'm happy with that. That cap is now protected. So we're going to just uh, turn this over. And place our component down. A little bit of flux.
Okay, clean up while it's still hot. And here's the look of our replaced component. Everything looking amazing. So we're gonna replace this capacitor here right now, and then that should be good. While we're at it, let us check for this short circuit. So once again, on ground, multimeter on ground, and check in 12 volt. And our short is gone. So we actually had that correct the first time. Great news, let's work. And this card is now ready to be tested. Since our short is now cleared, we're going to plug this in and see if we have a switching frequency on this phase. Make sure this is all working correctly. And hopefully everything's good to go and we'll close it up and test it. We have the card now hooked up to a riser and we're about to check the switching frequency of the phase we've just repaired. So we have the multimeter in frequency mode and we're about to power on the device and switching on right now. As you can see, we have a 300 kilo switching frequency, which is perfectly normal. So this card should be repaired and we'll assemble the cooler now and plug it in for further testing. Okay, so our card's just installed its driver. Let's uh, have a look at the details. And we'll let it run a test. The temperatures aren't climbing erratically, so that'll probably be good. We'll leave it on test now for some time and see what we get from there. So we're not currently being fussy about the videos we're taking. Uh, we're actually picking a device, one off the shelf, one per week. Uh, whatever's next in order so you might see a lot of repetitive videos if you do like the video and you've learned something about our content uh, please like and subscribe and thank you very much for watching the video